So yes, hi and hello. Welcome all of you once again to our channel, Vage Academy of Mathematics. And this playlist is a new one where you can find videos for CBAC Class 11 Applied Mathematics. And this session we are about to see some introduction about this topic, surges and indices. This is what we are going to have in our this session. And we are about to see a few introduction and also we are going to see some important axioms that we repeatedly use here to solve the problems. And that's going to be the plan for this session. Yes, we go. So basically, surges, indices, exponents, what do you mean by these terms? So basically, what do you mean by an exponent? Because once we step into this topic, we must be knowing about what is an exponent. So what is an exponent? This is very easy for us to understand. An exponent is some expression which is given in terms of power. That's it. Okay. So we commonly use this kind of power expressions, right? So whenever we do mathematics, it is very common for us to involve these terms like phi square. Like we use 3 to the power 4 and we use 7 to the power 3. All these are going to be exponential terms. That's it. Okay. So coming here, what do you mean by this 5 square? This 5 square actually stands for 5 times of 5. That is, I multiply this 5 twice. Why twice? Because 5 is raised to the power 2. That's the reason. So I'm going to multiply 5 into 5. I mean, I'm going to five, multiply this 5 two times. So 5 fives are 25. That's going to be the answer. Same way, coming to this 3 to the power 4. This means I'm going to multiply this 3 for 4 times. So that means I will be getting 3 into 3 into 3 into 3. And this will give me 81 to be my answer. And last, I have 7 power 3. This I can term it as 7 cube. So this is nothing but 7 into 7 into 7 because 7 is raised to the power 3. So that means I have to multiply 7 thrice. I mean 3 times. So this would give us 343. So these kind of expressions are what we call it as exponents, right? So exponents are nothing but you have a number which is going to be raised to some power. So any expression of the form x to the power y, we call it as an exponent. Where this x, you call it to be the base. And this y, you call it to be the power. So overall, some base raised to some power. This entire thing is what we call it as an exponent. All right? Yes. And here in this chapter, throughout, we are going to solve problems based on these kind of exponents only. But before that, we should be very clear with certain important basic axioms because using those axioms are what we are going to solve the problems. And in that case, it is important for us to know about the axioms. So what I will do here is I will list all the important axioms and also we will see the meaning. I mean the explanation of all those axioms, okay? How they work, the meaning with some examples so that it would give a better clarity for you to understand. Yes, yeah. So coming to this axioms, there are going to be very importantly, six main axioms. So let me list out them one by one. So let me give the heading here, the important axioms. So what are those axioms? Let's see them one by one. So the first one is, the first axiom is a to the power m multiplied by a to the power n is nothing but it is equal to a power m plus n. This is going to be the first axiom. So that is, you have two exponential terms with same basis. And if they are multiplied, what happens is, it's very simply the powers get added up. That's it. That's what we have it as a power m times a power n is nothing but a to the power m plus n. So if you want to have an example here, it's very easy for us to understand. See here, Let's have a very simple example. I'll just place the example here on the right hand side. So example, let's take, let's take a very simple example. So if I, if I write like two to the power four multiplied by two to the power three, this simply means I have two to the power four, which means two is going to be multiplied for four times multiplied by two to the power three. And that is two is multiplied for three times. So overall, what would I get? I would get two is multiplied for an entire seven times, overall seven times. So that's the reason we add up like two to the power 
4 plus 3, we can directly do that, right? So this will simply give you 2 to the power 7. Okay, that is how the first axiom works. So it's very easy for us to remember. Yeah, coming to the second axiom. Second axiom is nothing but it's about the division. Okay, so a power m divided by a power n will be nothing but a to the power m minus n. Like how we have multiplication, the right hand side we get added up, the powers get added up. The same way when we have division on the left hand side, I mean, if we have two exponential terms with same basis getting divided, what happens on the right hand side is the power gets subtracted. Okay. This is again very simple for us to understand. Let's take the same example. For example, if I take two to the power uh, maybe five, it is divided by two to the power three. What happens on the left hand side? What happens is two to the power five. That means two is multiplied for five times. You mean, I mean two into two into two into two into two into two. You have five times, which is divided by two into two into two, three times. So what happens is you will have three twos from the numerator and three twos from the denominator gets canceled up and you will end up with only two twos, which is what is two to the power five minus three. So when you have a division, you can actually subtract the powers, the first one minus the second one. So the order is also important. The order is very much important. So the first one minus the second. So five minus three, your answer is two square. That's it. Okay. And simplifying this and getting the answer, it is again based on the problem and how you have the answers. Yeah, fine. Yes, coming to the third axiom. Third axiom is again an extension. So this says a power m to the whole power n is equal to a to the power m into n. So when you have a power of power, that is when you have a power, you mean how you, you have an exponent raised already and it is once again raised to another power. What happens? What happens is the right hand side you have the powers get multiplied. That's it. Okay. So this is again very simple for us to understand. So for example, if you have two to the power three, which is raised to the power maybe four, your answer would be nothing but two to the power three times of four. So three times of four, which will give you two to the power 12. Very simple, right? Okay. Because it's very simple for us to understand because you have two to the power three, that itself would be multiplied for four times. So that means you have three fours. So that's the reason we multiply here three fours, which would give up which would give us 12. That's it. Okay. Yeah, fine. Next is it's about a negative power. What happens if you have a base A, which is raised to a negative power? What happens? So when you have A to the power minus N, so this is equal to 1 by A to the power N. So it's very simple. When you have a base raised to a negative power, then what happens is it's nothing but the same base raised to the positive power, but it becomes the reciprocal. Okay. Now again, an example, let's take an example. If I write two to the power minus three, this simply means one by two to the power three or otherwise one by eight in simple meaning. Okay. Yes. So whenever you have a negative power, you see the negative power, you just reciprocal the term and you take the power to be positive. That's it. Okay. I mean, you turn the negative power to positive power. And the same happens in the reverse direction. The positive power becomes negative power. Okay. And I can extend this like, for example, for example, I can even extend this as a by b the whole power minus n will be nothing but b by a to the whole power n. Very simple, right? Because what we are doing here is a by b to the, to the whole power minus n. This becomes, I'm just taking the reciprocal of what I have inside. I mean the base b by a. And the power becomes negative because minus n we have here and that becomes plus n. Very simple. Yeah. Next one. Next one is next one is very rare one and it is not used very often, but it is very important for us to understand this. So this says a to the power a fraction. I mean power itself is reciprocal a to the power 1 by n. This is nothing but the nth root of a. So this is really, really important for us to understand, but this is going to be very rare. Yet here in our chapter, search and indices, this is going to be very much frequent. Okay. So yes. So this let's try to understand with some example once again. So for an example, if I want to understand this, so let's take a very simple example. Okay. Yes. 
So suppose if I take 25 to the power half. So this simply means, it means the square root of 25. I know square root of 25 is 5, right? So this is what it means. Same way, for, for clarity, I will take one more example. Suppose if I take 343 raised to the power 1 by 3. So this means cube root of 343. So cube root of 343, it's nothing but 7. Because just now we came across one example, right? See here, I know that 7 power 3 is 343. So it's 7 cube that gives 343. And the same thing I'm using here in the reverse direction. Cube root of 343 is 7. Okay. However, the meaning is when you have a base raised to a reciprocal power, it simply means nth root. That's it. Okay. Yes. That's what this axiom says. I mean, our fifth axiom would say. So here, if you take this first example here, 25 raised to the power 1 by 2, we don't indicate the 2 here. Why? Because it is default. We default in default way we understand that. Simply root means it's, it means square root. That's it. Okay. That's the reason. And similarly, if we come to write like, uh, for example, if I, if I come to write 6, 5, 6, 1 raised to the power 1 by 4, this is nothing but 4th root of 6, 5, 6, 1. And, and if you factorize and if you get so, you will get the answer to be 9 for this one. Okay. Just for a clarity, I'm giving some extra examples here. And yes, of course, the last one, a very important one. It's a trivial one. A power zero is equal to one. So any 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 term raised to power zero will give you the answer to be one. Okay. For example, I see two power zero. This would be one. Five power zero. This is one. Seven power zero. This is one. One power zero. This is one. So any term raised to the power zero will be one. And all these are what we are important six axioms. So let's revise revise all these axioms. So our first one says a power m times a power n is equal to a power m plus n. Second one a power n divided by a power n is equal to a power m minus n. Third one says a power m the whole power n is equal to a power m into n. And fourth one says a power minus n is equal to 1 by a power n. And fifth one says a to the power 1 by n is equal to nth root of a. And sixth one says a power 0 is equal to 1. And all these are valid provided, this is even more important, provided your a is non-zero. Only if your a is non-zero, we can guarantee all these axioms. And nothing to worry because whenever we play with this kind of axiom problems, thirds and indices questions, we usually get our basis with some non-zero values only. So this, this condition is really important. So when your A is, as long as your A is non-zero, I mean, your A is not equal to zero, all these axioms will stand valid. Okay, fine. Yes, you can even revise these axioms so that it would be very easy for you to go use them in the problems and solve, get the answers. Kindly revise all these axioms because in future, we happen to solve problems based on these indices, thirds and indices. All these axioms are very much important for you to do the problems. That's the reason. Fine. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So soon we'll catch up in the next session. We'll work some example questions there. We'll solve problems there. And I hope we catch there very soon, as early as possible. See you soon there. Thank you so much. Bye.